Hi everybody. Today we are going to make a vintage master board and then we're going to transform it and make two projects with two very different looks. Here's the master board, very vintage, and we're going to use unwanted napkins to, to add to it. So before we do that, I am going to do some stenciling, add some interest to the background, and I'm using black acrylic paint with a makeup sponge. This is the Art Is 6x6 stencil from the Crafters Workshop, and it's a great one if you want script that's a little bit larger. Here, whatever I'm putting on on these beginning layers, I want to be peeking through later. They're not going to be front and center. I just want a little bit of interest in there. Now when you're creating a master board, you don't know exactly what the end project is. You are simply creating. This one is called Garden's Gate, again from the Crafters Workshop. And I'm just layering it on top of the art is stenciling. I want to get it on a variety of places on this master board. And what I'm creating on, this is just an 11 by 17 copy paper. I want it light because I know that I might be using it as an Insta background that I'm just going to glue it on. And I don't want things to get too thick. I'm loving the way these two stencils here are playing together, the look that it gives. Then I grab this Ginkgo stencil, also from the Crafters Workshop, and I'm stenciling this in. And again, I'm loving the look of these three stencils, and I'm making a note to myself to use these three stencils on another project because I really like how they work. They're kind of three different scales. We've got the smaller of the script, the, the garden gate, and the ginkgo. And I love the look. I even love the look on the black and white. So stay tuned. I'm going to use that. So when you're creating with a master board, sometimes your creativity is freed up because you're not focused on the end goal. You're just focused on colors and textures and patterns. Now here is a napkin that, well, you know what, I'm not a deer head kind of person, but I do like these roses and I do like the color and it's reading very vintage. So I'm just going to, what I call, harvest the parts of this napkin that I like. I'm going to take out that deer head and I'm even going to use the antlers because I like that golden color with the pink. And I'm going to use those to add to my master board. So this is a great way to use up those napkins that either you have too much of because you bought a whole pack or you just don't like. Now you're going, why would I buy a napkin I don't like? Well, sometimes we pick up a napkin when we're socializing, we get gifted napkins, we do an exchange, and you get something that, yeah, it doesn't really speak to you. Here's how you can use it up and crash your stash. Don't store it, use it. So I'm going to be making an effort of breaking pages with it. Now that yellow that's in there reminds me of some pattern paper or old book paper. So I'm grabbing some pattern paper. I love how this decoupage is down and it's definitely adding that vintage look to the overall look. Had I not added that golden color, it wouldn't necessarily read as vintage. It would have changed everything. So every decision you make leads to the next one. And I'm going to admit here and now, I wish I had stopped sooner or had made different decisions, but you know what? You learn and you can take that learning moving forward. If 
If you don't have patterns, you can get some very cheaply at a thrift store, which is also a great place for old books and other things that you can use to add to a master board. Now, because the napkins and the, the pattern paper is goes mostly translucent, you're still seeing a lot of that patterning and that we did with the stencils peeking through. I'm using Fluid Matte Medium from Liquitex to glue everything down, but you can use decoupage from Deco Art or Mod Podge. Use what you have. This is just what I prefer, but I do recommend a matte finish. Especially at this stage. I do stop periodically and grab out my heat tool and give this a dry. You're adding a lot of layers. I wanted a little bit more color, so I looked at the darker pink that was in there, went to my filing cabinet, pulled out my pink gel prints, and pulled out these deli paper gel prints that are bringing in a little bit of the darker color. And I'm just randomly putting them on here. There's more pattern added. These don't quite go as translucent as the tissue paper, as the napkin, so it covers up, pushes back some of that stamping, or not stamping, stenciling that we had done. Now I could have at this stage if I wanted some of that stenciling and patterning back, I could grab it out and stencil another layer on top. I chose not to do that, but that was an option and that I did consider. Now, this is a part where I thought about leaving it like it was, but I decided to add a little bit of green. This is Hooker's Green, and I'm rubbing it on and rubbing it off and just adding that. And this really pushes it to more vintage feel. Because we've gotten rid of a lot of that white. Here I'm taking some gesso and just doing a bit of a wash with it to knock back those colors and soften them and blend them on the page. Now I grab my, this is a sink liner that I've cut and I'm putting gesso on it and using it as a stamp to add some white to it and, and add some patterning. This is making some of the deli paper in that darker magenta meld into the background. It's pushing everything and turning it so it's, that's not so much of a focal. It's not the first thing you see, those hard edges. This is my favorite DIY mark maker. And it's adding texture because this is gesso and it's not thick gesso, but it does add some wonderful texture to this master board. So there is the finished master board and I absolutely love it. Now I'm grabbing out my window templates. This is the six by six and I'm moving it 
around the master board, trying to decide, looking at the composition. I want something interesting. Now, with the master board, you can cut it up to maximize how many projects you're going to get out of it, or you can be very specific, and like I am here, and look for the perfect composition, which may mean you are going to waste more of it. You're not going to get as much. So that's, I'm thinking I could get a composition book. I think I'm, I could get my 7x10 mixed media art journal page. So usually I go and I pick, put on the biggest things, in this case the 7x10 art journal and the 6x6 card, and then I see what else I can make out of it. 4x4s, 3x5s. So once those are all cut out, and I didn't bore you with it by putting that, I am using gel medium to glue it down onto whatever substrate I am wanting to glue it down on. I'm using the brayer to get good contact, and I'm giving this a lot of dry time before I cut off the excess. I'm going to do something with this, the six by six, before I glue it down, and that's going to come a little bit later. These are ATC cards that I've made from leftover packaging. I've just cut them to size, and now I'm just gluing it down. I find that gluing those down onto the ATCs, and then I have a stash of unfinished ATCs that I can sit down and do in a, in a session. using that brayer to put down. So here's where I'm going to add, I'm using the makeup sponge with black paint and I'm going and adding that now. It's easier to do that now than later because I don't, won't run the risk of getting any of that black on the white card base. This also gives it a beautiful border. That black is just really sets it off and helps me think about the next step, which is the focal image and the composition of what I'm going to put on the card and on the art journal page. So I edge all my substrates. And here they are. So we did a six by six card base, and I think, believe I cut it five and a half by five and a half, a composition book, which I make for craft fairs, so it's great to have excess. And the basis of two ATCs, which I'll finish later, and my 7x10 art journal page. So now my brain is turned to focal images. So I flip through my map napkins, my stamps, my free printables, and I have this Buddha napkin from Ninny's Napkins. And I don't know if it was the ginkgo leaves that I put in the background, but I was thinking very much Japanese, and that's why I grabbed this napkin. I'm not sure at this point if I'm going to put one or two on the page, or three. So I'm going to go with the Buddha on one of my substrates. And the colors of this. I don't know if it was the stamping with the sh the sink liner that reminded me of the lotus blossoms or the green of the frog. So I'm just going to rough cut these elements out just so I can play with them on my art journal page on that card base and make decisions about what I'm going to put together. And I chose the frog with the orange shirt as opposed to the blue one because blue, there's nothing blue in that background. That doesn't belong. So that's why I made those decisions. Now, at this point in time, I'm thinking, oh, I could take the lotus blossom from the frog napkin and give it to the Buddha, which is a similar feel.
I'm playing with the composition. And when you're taking focal images or elements from a napkin, you want to be able to play with it. So rough cut it. At this stage, I'm leaving on the excess plies because it's simply easier to cut, but I will be taking those off later. With the Buddha, I could have done some cherry blossoms in the background as well. So there's, even within what I've done, there's more options. I love this frog. I think it's really funny. The colors really go. Now, your master board, you can use exactly as it is and don't tweak it. On both of these, I'm going to add elements that are going to change the tone or the feel of the page. So here I'm using a piece of painter's tape to take off the excess plies. Now I want, when I glue these down, I know that the napkin's going to go translucent, but I don't want to see the background coming through on the Buddha or on the frog. So to avoid that, I am going to glue these down with the fluid matte medium onto just white copy paper. And I'm putting all these elements, I'm not sure exactly which one I'm going to use or how many I'm going to use. So I'm gluing them all down. And I know that whatever I don't use on this project or these two projects, I can use on another project. They'll just stay in my stash. So I'm gluing it down, putting the matte medium underneath and getting a good cut copy on the t or cover of it on the top. And that's important because when I'm shading or I want that to be a non-porous surface. So I cut them out off camera and then I played with them and as you can see I have a different plan. I put the frog on the art journal page with the lotus and I'm putting the Buddha on the card base. So there's the Buddha. Now I remind myself that I have this stencil from Stamperia and it has these Japanese symbols and I'm adding some stenciling. So here I'm taking that what was vintage background adding the Japanese symbols and changing the feel. I'm tying it together with the, my focal image and just adding that little bit of black. I could have also come in with that ginkgo leaf and added some of that on there, but I thought the scale of that was a little too big for the card. So I'm just playing around and adding bits and bobs of this. And I'm even going on to the white area of the card base. I wanted to use that magnolia blossom or branches that was there, but on this particular background, that was going to not show up. The background's a little too busy. And then I'm using from this Flower Garden Stampers Anonymous stamp set. It looks like a lotus blossom and I'm keeping it white. And a sentiment from my grateful, thankful, blessed sentiment pack. I'm cutting off some of the excess white. And while this isn't a quote that's attributed to Buddha, it does sound very Buddha-like. The root of joy is gratefulness. And I liked how that font worked with everything. Now this background is very reminiscent of cherry blossom, the color of cherry blossoms. It looks like maybe even mountains in the background, which goes with the Buddha and the stamping or the stenciling that I've done. So that's going to dry. I'm going to glue, I'm gluing down the flower on top. Let's just add it white. So this one, and right now you, I'm going to be gluing this down and I'm using matte medium here, matte gel medium, not the fluid medium, because the paper is a little bit thicker. I've got copy paper and napkin, and I just find the 
the gel works better. Now, as I'm gluing this down, you can say, oh, but Karen, this is, it melds too much with the background. And right now it does. But I know that I'm going to add color to this, tweak the color, and I'm also going to do some shading to make the focal image stand out. What I could have done is also have given this a white wash of white gesso before I put that down. And that would have just pushed back the background that little bit, which would allow the focal image to stand out more. So two options. So I give this a good dry after I put the gel medium, glue it down with gel medium. And I grabbed a sentiment from my short and sweet sentiment pack, Enjoy Life, because it just reminded me of what that frog might be saying. So I'm grabbing my ink tense blocks, but you could use pit brush markers, you could use watercolor, although that will reactivate. And I'm using the swatched out colors to pick a color that's going to go with it. So I'm just brushing it on, mixing it with water. I'm dipping into water, rubbing it on, just adding, making it a little bit brighter, a little bit deeper in color. Now you can do the same thing with um, acrylic paints, just water them down. This is different than over painting where I would be using gesso and thicker paint. And really at the end, it looks like it has been painted. This I'm just, it's a wash. I'm tweaking the colors and I'm going over the greens. I'm adding a couple different colors of greens. I add some, some of that yellow oxide color as well. I'm just deepening the colors. And you can see as this progresses how the focal image, what I glued down the was napkin, is standing out a little bit more from the background. Here I'm adding the yellow oxide color just to tie it into the background. And that was already in the napkin. I'm just embellishing or beefing up the colors that are there. And I'm adding some of that even into my background on top of the tissue paper. You want everything to work together. So same shades and tones. If you go back, you'll see where this was before I started tweaking the color and where it is now. But I'm not done bringing out this focal image. Here I'm adding some pink to the lotus blossoms. But I'm also adding some white gesso. I come back and I add white gesso to the ink tense blocks. Now ink tense blocks are ink, not watercolor, but they act like watercolor, but they are permanent when completely dry, which is why I love them. So here I'm adding a little white gesso, shading with gesso, and it's doing more of an overpainting on the lotus blossom. I love how the shape of the lotus blossom leaves goes and, and reads with the DIY stamping I did with that sink liner. I'm just adding some white. Now this shirt was more burnt orange than pink. So I'm just changing it. I'm getting my ink tense blocks and I'm painting it out, adding a little bit of gesso to really be able to knock that back. So you really, you can not only tweak the color, but absolutely change the color at this stage 
if something doesn't go. So say you only had the frog with the blue shirt. I could have added a layer of gesso and then painted it whatever color I want it. So here I am adding some shading to further make the focal image stand out. This is just black acrylic paint with my angle brush and my usual shading technique. And you can see on this lily pad how it makes it stand out more than other parts that I've not done the shading on. So you're, I'm going to go and on all of this is on camera because it's a longer process and but I'd go around all the images. Here I'm shading right on the napkin. I do also shade beside the napkin which is on the page and that gives more shadow and makes the focal image stand out. And I, I believe you're going to see me doing that with the Buddha because I do the same thing with the Buddha. So the steps of both projects are the same, but the feel is very different. And I'm going to add something to this background in a bit, just to make go more with the character or the feel of this one, where I definitely went Japanese and very Zen on the card base. I'm going to go kind of fun and frolicky with this one. I love the frogs in this napkin and I will link both of these napkins in the Ninny's Napkin affiliate link down below. I'll give you the names of them um, and there's a coupon code there. There's also a coupon code. She carries many of the TCW stencils and the Stamperia stencil. So you can go and check it out and many of the Stampers Anonymous stamps as well. So here I'm shading using that same shade technique, but I'm not going on the napkin part, I'm going on the card part, the background. So I do this on the frog as well. As I was saying with that frog, I can see myself doing many cards just, and they, oh, my sassy saying sentiment pack would be great with some of those frogs. They've got some real attitude. So, but that will be another day. I'm using my black Posca pen and I'm just outlining the sentiment. This is to make it stand out a little bit more. Now remember, that has a lot of texture, that masterboard background. So you got to be careful when you're outlining because it's not going to be perfectly flat or smooth and you don't want to make a mess at this stage. Here I've added another little border just to make it look a little bit more make it look bigger and I'm doing a sketchy line around the outside. Sketchy because well there's texture there and I'm not going to make a smooth line so don't even attempt it. Now this next part I've sped up but what I'm doing is I am taking my General's charcoal and outlining roughly the frog and the lily pads. I, the camera I had zoomed in so you don't get a good look, but I did want to make, leave it in so that I 
let you know that I've added this and it made a difference. Now the charcoal is, it will smudge. So you might want to spray it with a fixative, especially the card. If you're putting that in the mailbox or whatever, you don't want that to get all distorted later on. But I love the look of it. So I use it. But a little spray of a fixative from Krylon works wonders. Now here I'm adding some stamping. This could have been stenciling onto this background to change the fun. This kind of is reminiscent. It reads with the frog's eyeball, which is black and circular. And I'm just adding these dots from this stamp that, oh, I've used this stamp so much. It just needed a little bit something else. And this kind of knocks back the background. And it's fun. So here we have it. Our 7 by 10 art journal page. Enjoy life. Our 6 by 6 card. The root of joy is gratefulness. And to be finished in another creative session, I've got two ATCs. Love the backgrounds on them. Just need a focal image and a sentiment and a composition book, which will go in my craft fair makes and I will add a sentiment and a focal image at a later date as well. Hmm, maybe I could add the Buddha on here. You know, it probably would fit. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, ask me a question, follow me on Instagram. Until next time, go get creative.